does the son have the same ability to do whatever the father can do? Yes or no? Tana, every argument that you make where you reduce words to having a single definition just restates your position. So if they're inseparable from each other and there's many, how am I counting by division, genius? So there would be three gods if we counted by identity, correct? Little G God, as you know. What is the justification or argument for why we must count persons and attributes in God by identity, but count gods by another method other than simply trying to avoid that you're a polytheist? This is going to be more formal for our cross-examinations, folks. So we are looking for just questions on one side and just question or just answers on the other side. With that, Jake, the floor is yours to interrogate Jay right now. And you, according to you, the Father has the power to cause another divine person and alone causes the Son and the Holy Spirit. I, I already answered do this. The, You're equivocating the son, on power. Do the Son and Holy Spirit have the power to cause another divine person? You're equivocating on power. Power is not an energy. Do the sun? I didn't ask about energy. Do the sun and holy? No, but your your argument is saying that. Do the sun and holy spirit have the ability to cause another divine person? Causing a divine person is not an energy. Do they have the ability to cause another divine person? No. Okay, they don't. Thank you. If no, then do they have the same power? That's only if power is viewed as an energy, and I just argue that. The power that we're talking about here is not really correctly called power. It's called begetting. Okay, but it has to do with an action, doesn't it? Well, it's act in a different sense than energy, and that's what Athanasius I argued against the Arians. Yeah, I'm not asking about energy. I'm but asking about the your argument of all power. Your and argument. Power, power, is a, what, power is what an agent is able to do. Do you no, agree? Power is no. There's multiple senses to the word power. Okay, so when I say that God is all powerful, I mean that He can do whatever is metaphysical. There's first actuality, second actuality, and there's I'm power. I'm so divine. Are you going to let me finish? I didn't you ask just, you a question yet. You're you did. Already, no, you I didn't. asked multiple I'm questions, and then you immediately you, thought. I'm explaining there's, to there's you first what, actuality, I'm explaining second actuality. To you what the understanding of power is. I'm giving you my definition. You don't know the. You don't know the. I'm giving you my definition of power. I don't care about your definition definition. of power. My definition of power is your definition is not relevant. Whatever a being can possibly do. Now I'm asking you. That's not our view. Does the son have the same ability to do whatever the father can do? Yes or no? It's it's equivocating on the word power. I just gave you the definition of power. I, that's your definition. I don't exactly. So, so, so answer yeah, according so, to my so, definition. So you understand that every argument that you make, where you reduce words to having a single definition, just restates your position. So that's no, why it it's doesn't. an invalid move. No, it doesn't. It does. No, it doesn't because the Catholic. So you're not interested in our. I suppose versus, this might be a good opportunity to, to. It could be that uh, Jay, if you want to answer it according to your own definition of power, and you can share that definition, and then if you're willing to humor Jake's question using Jake's definition of power. Right. So Jake wants a single definition of what power is according to what he says it is. And if he's going to critique our position, then it needs to be our understanding of first actuality, second actuality, which we ascribe to God. And there's different senses to power. I can have power as a potentiality that I possess that I don't actualize. I could also have power as an actualized uh, uh, energy that I'm engaging in. Or sometimes in the sense of Athanasius talking about the father begetting, he says you could call this an act, but it's not act in the same way that God is a triad acts in terms of the energies. So Jake's argument hinges on reducing the word uh, act to having one sense in God, and we simply don't have that view. Okay, that's not my argument, but let's move on. That to is the your next argument. Question. That's what you argue. Let's move on to the next question here. Does the you're moving fa- on because it doesn't work? Does the Father no? Because you've already been refuted. Does the you, Father? You refute? Does the Father have the ability to become incarnate? We're not told that. So you don't know. You're agnostic on the proposition. Well, there's nothing about that. So there's no. I'm reason asking you, do you know about it or not? Can the father become incarnate? I, I, you're, so you're not even letting me answer. You're just immediately cutting me off. I, I asked just you a question. Said, I just simply said there's not any information about that. And the way that Jesus speaks is that no one has seen the father at any time. So there's no incarnation of the father. Okay. So people have interpreted John of Damascus as arguing that the father cannot be incarnate when he says in his exposition of Orthodox faith, book four. The Father is the Father and the, and not the Son. The Son is Son and not Father. The Holy Spirit is Spirit and not Father or Son for, or Father or Son. For the individuality is unchangeable. How indeed could the individuality continue to exist at all if it were 
ever changing and altering. Wherefore, the Son of God became Son of Man in order that his individuality might endure. So he's arguing that this must include that the Son only can become incarnate in order for the individuality of the di distinctions between the persons. So do you agree no. with that interpretation? I'll give it's you the a chance to respond, Jay, and then we've, we've actually just hit the seven minute yeah, I'm just mark, asking, do you agree chance. with that interpretation? That's all. It's the individuality of the persons as known by us. So uh, has not the incarnation is not what lets us know or what conditions the distinctions in the triad. Jay, so you said that uh, you're wondering, where did I get this idea that the divine essence is a universal? So let me read you from your good friend, Dr. Bo Branson, and his PhD dissertation on page 168 on the section 4.2.1 OCI and hypothesis. In Gregory of Nyssa on Universals, Richard Cross argues persuasively, in my view, that St. Gregory and St. Basil both use the term usia synonymously with nature, and they conceive of this as a universal. And then in the rest of the section, he goes on to explain just that, that the divine essence is conceived of as a universal by the Cappadocians. So what do you have to say in response to your buddy saying that? Yeah, the Zach Cooper book actually treats this, that the notion of universal uh, evolves over time between the way the Cappadocians use it and the way that the post-Chalcedonian uh, uh, fathers use it up into John Damascus and St. Maximus. So what's relevant for our debate in terms of uh, human universals is not whether or not God's essence is common, but whether or not there are created universals. So that's what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, but my so question, you're, my question you're is... My question is, does Bo Branson believe in this passage and what he argues for in his dissertation that the divine essence is a universal? Yes or no? You're equivocating on the term universal. Does he say that the divine essence is a universal? You're equivocating on the term universal. Okay, so you won't answer universal, the question. Do you think universal? I'm going to move on. I'm going to move so, on. So universal only has the, one sense. I'm going to move on because it's clear it only has to one the audience. Sense. It's clear to the audience that you can't say that. Now, let's move on to the LPT. You claim that I am counting by division within God. Explain how I'm counting by division within God. When you use the term inseparable. <laughs> I use the term inseparable means that I'm Separation counting by division. Separation means division. Separation means how division. How am I using that to count? Well, you said that the attributes are inseparable. Exactly. But how many attributes are there? Are there one or many? Well, is God's essence one? How many attributes are there, one or many, according to my position? You have you, you believe in many. Okay, they're many, and yet they're inseparable. So if they're inseparable from each other, and there's many, how am I counting by division, genius? No, in terms of the essence, you count by division by saying that it's one. No, there's one essence. Right. That's, that's well, where, right. Where, where is it? So where he's undivided, it? correct? Where is there accounting by division? There is none. Okay, exactly. It doesn't so mean that you're. On. It doesn't you, mean that you're you, saying you divided. You made a huge. So you're, not you're, even, you're not going to let. You're not going to let. It doesn't you mean that you think he's divided. You don't, you don't even understand the basics of this conversation. Let's I do move understand on. The basics let's, of it. let's let's move on. You don't understand the, now, the, the word. Now let now let's get to uh, some other issues. What is the difference between tefwid al mana and tefwid al kafiya? I don't know your terms. You don't know. No. So you have no idea what that means. No. Okay, and yet you think you're able to critique our position when these are basic terms. Is your religion is your religion made for all the exactly. world? Exactly. So, ex is yeah, it just but, for Arabs or but, all the world? No, but even when I'm critiquing the Trinity, I'm aware of the basic terms of what a hypostasis is, what well, an idea is. Terms. I'm under. I understand the basic. So is this a, is this a debate about grammar? Or this is a debate, debate about, about the fact that you're ignorant of our tradition. Thank you very much. Now right, let's so move a, on. So you want to make it about grammar? Next, and let's move on to the next question. Why is it problematic to believe that the persons are identical to the essence as Thomas Aquinas and many Catholics hold? Why is that problematic? Uh, because it basically ends up in reducing person to nature and it would be modalism. Okay, so you, would you consider that position heretical? Yeah, if you mean identity in the sense of uh, reductionist identity. Okay, so the Trinity, if you conceive of when you say the Father is God, that the Father is identical to God, would you agree that that's logically problematic because then it would follow that the father is identical to the son? Well, identity can be a, uh, the sense of is of identity or a predication. 
Yeah, I'm saying, and the Catholics make it explicit. There's there's no difference between the person and the nature Correct. in terms of the Thomists. So right. they say the Father is identical to the nature or essence, and so are the Son and the Holy Spirit, which by the logic of identity would follow that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are identical to each other. Do you agree with that critique? I think you could make that argument. That's why I said modalism. Do you know what okay. modalism is? Yeah, you exactly. know what modalism is? Yes, I do know what okay. modalism is. So, yeah, so you're I, just asking I, me again what I, I already I, said. No, because I want so you're you asking to be, me again I, what I, I want you to be more explicit, but I'm supposed to ask questions, not you. Thank you very much. Now, how many persons are there in the Trinity? Three. Are they separated by time or space? No. So you count the persons by identity and not division, right? Correct. Okay, does God have one eternal attribute or energy or more than one? More than one. Are his eternal attributes separated from each other by time or space? No. Okay, so you count the attributes by identity and not division, right? Correct. Okay, so if we count gods in the Trinity by the same method of identity, how many gods would we count? Depends on what God picks out. If we're talking about the persons. Three. So there would be three gods if we counted by identity and the same method that we count the attributes or eternal energies and the persons, correct? Right. Okay. Your friend Bo Banson says... Little, that, little G God, as you know. Okay. So your friend, so there would be three little G gods. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Your friend Bo Branson says that today we count by identity. So that would mean by the standard way in which we count today, there would be three gods in the Trinity, correct? The way that we count today is talking about post frega Okay, so and that's, Bo by, and that's says, analytical. And I'm going to quote what he says. I'm going to quote what he says. Counting by identity. So today we count. So you don't S. want me to answer it. Today we count. No, I'm answering. I'm going to give you more. Yeah, you're answering. Yeah, you're answering. Today, exactly. today you ask count, the questions and then you today answer. Today we count F's by one logical subjects that are discernible from, or at least not identical to one another, and R F. That is, X and Y are diff. If if X and Y are different in any way and are both F ish, we count them as two F's. So that's in his explanation that we count today by identity, yet you're quoting these other sources, which is not even my argument. My argument is that you're inconsistent in your methodology. So do you have no, any, only if you think that you, you only if you think you that have, you count in one way? No, no, no. It's not about one counting. I already forgive me. I already addressed them. I got to I've got to see if uh, you can ask a question, Jake, just to keep it as strict as possible. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a question. What is the justification or argument for why we must count persons and attributes in God by identity, but count gods by another method other than simply trying to avoid that you're a polytheist? By the example that I gave from first order and second order imposition and the way that all of the ancient world counted. So there is no justification. That you're not, was, you're not that asking why argument. we count the attributes and the persons by identity, but we and count we because count different things are, because what what you can't understand is that different gotta, things. I'll give you a chance ways. to answer exactly. The question, but you're not giving Jay, an ad but, no, and then I've got to wrap us up. I got to be. I'll give you a chance to answer the question, Jay, and then I've got to wrap us up. Okay, that's can I can I answer what he asked? He just talked the whole time and didn't let me answer. You can answer. You can answer the last question he asked. Yeah. So different things are counted in different ways. That's what I argued. And I've argued that from my opening statement, your argument hinges on only counting in one way. And you're taking out of context the fact that Dr. Branson said that most people today post Frega think of counting in one way. When this is a dispute about the way that people in the ancient and medieval world counted, which is not by strictly by identity.